On Monday, while driving back to State College on Route 322, I was at the foot of Seven Mountains, and the still completely frozen over Laurel Creek Reservoir came into view. Testimony to the chill of the last few months and symbolic of what's happened on a larger scale this winter. The percentage of the Great Lakes covered by ice peaked late last week at just over 92 percent, the second most for any month, the most on record in March, and the most so late in the winter. And records go back to 1973. Only February of 1979 had more ice when almost 95 percent of the lakes were covered. Here's a satellite view of each lake near its peak ice coverage last week. Superior reached 94.5 percent. It completely iced over in 1996. Michigan was just above 93 percent ice covered last Saturday, close to the record set in 1977. Huron hit 96% iced over last week. The record there is 98%. Erie also reached 96% covered last week. Like Superior, it has completely frozen over before, most recently in 1996. And finally, Ontario was about 60% iced over last week, not close to the record of 86% in 1979. Of all the lakes, Erie is shallowest and contains by far the least water, so it tends to freeze first. It reached 90% ice covered this year in mid-January, right after the first really big cold snap. At the other extreme is Ontario, which tends to freeze last and least, because it's deeper, somewhat sheltered by the other lakes from the most brutal chill, and also because its waters are agitated a bit by water fed from Lake Erie by the Niagara River. Here we track the maximum percentage of the Great Lakes covered by ice in each year since 1973. Before that, the data is less reliable. The dashed red line is the 40-year average, just over 50 percent. So in an average year, only about half the total area of the lakes ices over at the peak. The least ice at peak was in 2002, when less than 10 percent of the lakes froze. The greatest ice coverage was in 1979, when almost 95 percent of the total surface area froze. What really strikes me is the dramatic change that occurred in the late 1990s. Before that, 18 of the 25 winters were above the long-term average. But since then, only five of the last 17 winters have seen the peak ice coverage above the long-term average. That really makes this year's 92 percent stand out even more. It's interesting to watch the ice jostle around on a daily basis. The wind has a noticeable impact. Here's a four-hour loop of Lake Michigan last Wednesday showing the effect of northerly winds further opening up cracks in the ice. The very next day, you can see easterly winds helping to enlarge a huge break in the ice in the center of Lake Erie. Now, on the large scale, the ice on the lakes has to exert a bit of a slowdown on our march into spring, especially when winds are from the northwest. In past years, with almost this much ice on the lakes in mid-March, at least some lingered on Lake Erie into early May, and the entire lakes weren't completely ice-free until mid to late May. Fred is back with the extended forecast next.